Are you looking to find the best spot to put your solar array or greenhouse or garden or something like that? In this video, I'm going to show you a quick way to find the sunniest spot on your property. And the cool thing is that you can do it right now and find out what the solar effect would be for any month of the year. And on top of that, you're going to be able to pinpoint which trees you need to take down and which ones you can leave. So let's show you how it works. The ready light into the country. So we're going to be checking a couple of things here. We have a greenhouse that's going in here this year and we want to see what trees we need to take down for that greenhouse. Also, we have a addition to our solar array that we're going to put in back behind here or somewhere around here. We want to identify the best place for that. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go to the middle of the spot where whatever it is is going on. In this case, the greenhouse. So I'm going to come over here to roughly the middle of where it doesn't have to be precise, but I'm going to stand in the middle. And then you could use a compass and a inclinometer for this next step if you wanted to. And I actually have a Silva Ranger compass that also has an inclinometer on it. And you could use that if you wanted to, but much easier is to use a special app on your phone. And we'll be telling you in the end, we'll give you where you can get all the information for doing exactly what I'm doing here. But I have this app on my phone and I'm going to work my way across the Southern horizon and I'm going to put the crosshairs right at the tops of any obstructions across the southern horizon. Now, if it's a tree that I'm going to take down, I'm going to act like it's not even there, and I'm just going to ignore it with where I put my crosshairs. But uh, I'm going to line up my crosshairs just so, like right at the top of the tree line there, and then I'm going to push this button, the little camera button in the bottom right-hand corner, and boom, it just took a screenshot that captures the degrees of inclination and the compass bearing. So the degrees of inclination are over on the right-hand side, and you can see it's somewhere around 8 degrees, something like that. And the compass bearing is due east, 90 degrees. And so I'm just going to work my way across. We'll take another snapshot there. I'm ignoring that tree right there because that's going to come down. So I'm going to work my way over there, take a screenshot there. And then there's a tree in the distance there that I plan on taking down. I don't think that one's going to make a big difference anyway. So I'm just going to ignore that one and act like it's not there. Take a shot there. Then we've got the shop there. And then I'm going to go up to this tree there. And then because there's a bit of a gap between these two, take one there. And then I'm going to go up to the top of these two, kind of average those two. And those trees right there are beautiful cedars that we want to leave. And so that's why I'm not cutting them down. There are some closer trees, though, that we do plan on taking down. And I actually probably shot a little bit high for that because that cedar is actually back behind it. So in this case, I took that screenshot a little bit wrong. And so sometimes you might have to move a little bit to the left or the right to see the tree that's behind it. It can be challenging sometimes. I'm going to zoom in here by pushing the, the zoom button. Okay, I think it's right about there. Okay, and I'm just going to work my way across. And then this is going to be the tricky part here is this batch of trees right through there. I'm going to take these down, these close, these nearby ones. So my job is to estimate what is the tree line, the horizon, back behind those. If you didn't know that you were going to take these trees down, then you could work your way up and across and over and see what the effect would be on your sunshine. I already know what the effect is going to be, and it would be really bad. It already is really bad. And so I'm just going to work my way across here because I can kind of see back there behind it. I can see some skyline. You can see some light through those trees, and that can kind of help cue you in on where the tree line is. So I'm just going to do some rough guesses there because I have a pretty good idea of where the trees are back there. And then those, that little bunch there, I plan on taking those down. So I'm going to go and see that one's going to come down. So I'm actually going to keep going to there and just kind of go across this general horizon. 
And then we've got this batch of trees here. This is getting to where it's getting pretty close to the west, so the sun is going to be pretty low in the horizon, even in the summer. But I, I'd probably be willing to take those down, so I'm just going to work my way across there. Okay, so I have all of these saved, and now I, I would go and do my, the same thing for where the uh, solar array is going to go, the addition to our solar array. And you can do the very same steps through there, and then we're going to go inside, and I'm going to show you what to do with all of these pictures, because this makes it so nice, because you don't have to be fighting with papers and writing all kinds of numbers down and doing all of this out in the field. You can just take some quick snapshots, and then you can go in, sit at your desk, and work at your computer, and do the rest of this process, and get it all figured out. Now real quick, if you want to follow this process yourself, you're going to need our custom sun map chart. This isn't just a helpful tool, it's the core of how this whole method works. And you can grab it free right now at thereadylife.com forward slash sunmap. And I'll also tell you which app or compass I recommend once you download it. Here's our photos that we took outside, and we're going to plot these on the sun chart. And you'll see where we're going with this in just a moment, so stick with me and you're going to see why this is so awesome. So first of all, We'll open up the first photo, and we are going to be looking at the uh, degrees of inclination, vertical degrees of inclination, and also the horizontal compass bearing. And uh, note that this is in true degrees, not magnetic. And so this app, it'll convert it to true north degrees. So we're just going to round it to 9 degrees and 92. So you would normally do this on paper. You'd just print this out and do it on paper, but I'm doing it here on my computer so you can see it better. So first of all, you'll notice that there was like a wall of trees. So I'm going to represent those. This is representing shade. And so everything under this line is shaded. So we've got 90, so 92 degrees and 8 degrees somewhere thereabouts is going to be our first plot point. Eight degrees, eight or nine, something like that, eight and a half, and 92. This is, this is not precision. We're just getting a, you know, we're just getting close um, to give us a, a good uh, estimation. So then we'll move on to the next picture. And remember, we were going to cut this tree down, so we're not taking that one into account. So we just are staying with the horizon or with the tree line there. That's 13 and a half degrees vertical and 104 horizontal. So 13 and a half, 104. So let me drag one of these over. 13 and a half, 104. So, so this represents five degrees each. So 95, 100. 105, so pretty close to there, and 13 and a half degrees, so that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of there. And I'm going to go ahead and plot each of these on here, and then we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so we just did the last one here, and I'm just going to look at the picture. I probably should have taken a few more pictures over this direction. We were getting pretty close to west, but probably should have gone a little further. I'm just looking at the horizon here and would probably take these out, so I think I can continue on at about this same 22, 23 degrees, something like that. So we'll just continue this on somewhere thereabouts. So uh, we've plotted all of the points on here, and now everything that's shaded, or if you're doing this on paper, everything that's below the line is in shade, literally, from from the, uh, the trees. And so what we're looking at is each of these blue lines is a different month of the year, and it represents the arc of the sun through the sky for a different month of the year. And so, for instance, this is December. This bottom line is December. And you can see um, that each of these red lines is a certain time. And that's 
I believe, standard time, not daylight savings time. So it's in shade until about 1030 in December. So about 1030, the sun uh, will poke out if it's a sunny day. And then it'll be in sun until maybe just barely skirt over those trees there until about, let's see, there's one and two between one and two, so maybe 1.30. So from about 10.30 to 1.30. So three hours-ish of sunshine in December, the worst month of the year. And in a very northern latitude like this, that's not terrible, considering it's the middle of the day, so you're getting the, the peak of the sun. This is helping us from a greenhouse standpoint of knowing how many hours of sun and maybe we need to take a few trees down around here, perhaps a few more there. From a solar standpoint, as far as solar power, like solar panels, what you can do is get an idea of what percentage of potential sun, potential solar power that you could produce and by adding these numbers together. So we'd go like half of 15, so maybe 7 plus 18 plus 18 plus... I don't know, maybe another seven or eight, something like that. And you add those up, and that's roughly the percentage of potential solar power that you could get for a sunny day in December. And then the same goes true for each month of the year, January, November, February, October. You'll notice this isn't sequential. This is uh, as far as the position of the sun in the sky. So it jumps from January or December to January to November to February. And so I would say, all in all, considering the far northern latitude of this site, this isn't a terrible location for solar power or for a greenhouse. Yes, it would be wonderful to get rid of those trees there, but in our case, those are some beautiful, massive cedars that we just haven't been able to part with. So we're willing to deal with that and we'll just optimize. We still have the middle of the day here and a good chunk of the afternoon, even some late morning. So it's just in the earlier hours of the morning. So we're not even missing out on a huge portion because it's like 10 o'clock up until about 10 o'clock. That's where these are affecting us. And so this is not bad. And the beautiful thing is you can be doing this in March and you can know what it would look like in November or July. It's the coolest thing. If you're trying to find the best spot on your property for a greenhouse or solar panels or anything that needs full sun, don't leave it to chance. Our exclusive sun map chart shows you exactly how much sunlight any location is going to get any month of the year. And you can download it for free at thereadylife.com forward slash sun map. It's a simple tool that gives you total clarity so you can stop guessing and start building in the right spot the first time. And we're also going to include a link to the best phone app we've found for this. Just head to thereadylife.com forward slash sun map to get yours and don't forget to check out this video.